Well, before I start real quick, uh, I just want to say uh, you'll have to excuse me throughout this video. I, uh, I developed a bit of a sinus infection over the past couple days thanks to the ridiculous 40-degree uh, weather changes um, that we've had the past couple days. So uh, I woke up pretty congested one day, and I'm, I'm trying to get over it. Hopefully I can get over it before the plow day this weekend. But uh, anyway, uh, here's a video for PA Plow Day Prep 2018. I basically have both of the tractors ready to go at this point. Um, at this point, most of you guys should have seen the video I uploaded about a week ago, a little over a week ago, um, just discussing my plans for the plow day. Um, over the course of the past week, I've made a couple changes um, and changed my plans a little bit. Um, I've been working really hard to get these two tractors ready to go. Uh, I'm really excited to be able to bring two tractors this year. Um, as you can see, uh, the Cub Cadet 1811 is gone. I was planning to bring that along with me um, just to try and sell it. But last Friday, I had a guy come by it, so that's uh, one less tractor I have to haul. Um, I'm going to miss that tractor, honestly. It was a fun project, and it was in really nice shape. Um, I just didn't have any uses for it, um, but I wish I could have kept it. Um, but yeah, that's one less tractor I have to drag up to the plow day, so um, that's I'll, I'll be traveling a little bit lighter, so that's good, I guess. So I'll give you an update just to show you what's changed from last week, and I'll uh, explain a little bit about my setup. Um, first, I'll show you the 140H3 here, since this is going to be the main plow day tractor this year. Um, so, uh, it may not look any different from the last video, but I've actually done a good bit of work to it over the past week. Um, a few weeks ago, I posted a video of the tractor running after I adjusted the valves. Um, Andrew, who owns this tractor, uh, swore that it had an issue with the valve lash. He thought the valves were out of adjustment and were causing it to misfire and uh, shut off when it was hot. Um, and it did that a couple times when I was plowing snow with it this winter, so I figured it wouldn't be a bad idea to tear into it and adjust the valves um, while I was getting ready for the plow day. So a couple weeks ago, I tore into it and uh, tried to adjust the valves myself. Um, valve adjustments are not something I'm very good at. Um, and I, uh, I got it running, and it seemed to run a little bit better than before, but I wasn't quite pleased with how it ran. So I tore it apart again for good measure, and I double-checked everything. Um, and I ordered like the gaskets and all the pieces for the valve cover um, through I Save Tractors, which is a great website. Norman really produces some nice aftermarket Kohler parts. So if you're looking for aftermarket parts for your K-Series Kohler, he's definitely the guy to buy from. Um, but anyway, uh, so I tore the valve cover off again. To get the valve cover off, you have to take the carburetor off. Um, and you have to undo some of this governor linkage here. Um, but that was fairly easy to take apart. Um, so I checked the valve lash again. I set the uh, the intake valve to nine thousandths of an inch and the exhaust valve to eighteen thousandths of an inch. Uh, double checked everything, put it all back together with new gaskets, cleaned up all the oil leaks. Um, there was a lot of dirt and grease build up on the block here from uh, a previous oil leak from the governor cross shaft. Evidently, it had a little bit of blow by. What happens over time with these Kohler K series engines is those. Uh, there's like a little plastic filter element inside that valve cover, and uh, when that filter element gets dirty and gets clogged up, it can cause excessive blow-by. It basically lets all that crankcase pressure um, bleed out of other places, so they usually start to leak from the governor cross shaft here. Uh, well, that had happened in the past, and it had leaked oil all over the side of the block, so I cleaned it all up, and uh, now that I put that new filter element in there, it doesn't have any more blow-by, at least from what I can tell. It's not leaking anymore. Uh, and it runs a heck of a lot better, even from the first valve adjustment. Uh, the first valve adjustment I did, you can really tell it makes a difference. Um, so I got that taken care of. It seems to have a little bit more power, and it actually idles nice and smooth now. Starts right up and doesn't skip a beat. Um, I went over the rest of the tractor just to get it ready. Um, you know, <clears throat> take care of anything that could potentially go wrong during the couple days at the plow day. Uh, I greased it. I uh, checked all the the filters and stuff. I changed the oil. Um, and as you can see here, I actually, uh, these are actually not the tires I had on it in the last video. Um, ever since I got the tractor, I was running the True Power tires that I, uh, would normally have on the 210. Um, and I had them off the 210 because the 210 had the, the HDAP tires mounted up for snow plowing. Um, so, uh, once I dewinterized the 210, uh, I took the ag tires off of the 140 and I mounted them up on the 210 where they belong, and I put my 50 pound wheel weights on that. Um, and I finally got a hold of a second rim. Uh, I bought one off of Ethan High Tech Redneck on YouTube. 
uh, he had an extra one for sale, so uh, he sent it down to me, and uh, it was in nice original condition. I believe it came off of his 214, um, so it matched the condition of the spare room that I had laying around uh, that I got with my 318 when I bought it last summer. And then I spent a night, um, or spent a couple hours one night, uh, swapping the brand new Carlisle True Power tires over. So the rear tires on this 140 are brand new. I love the True Power tires. I think they provide the most aggressive tread out of most of the um, ag tires you can buy for garden tractors in this size. Um, and they're four ply too, so they're a little bit more durable. These and the Firestone Flotation 23s are probably the best ag tires you can buy for garden tractors. And uh, now I've got two sets of True Power tires, so <clears throat> so uh, that's another thing I got out of the way. Uh, I mounted up the 50-pound uh, wheel weights that Andrew was nice enough to lend me. Um, this tractor should have plenty of weight on it for plowing. Uh, if I remember correctly from last year's plow day, I didn't see too many 140s that were really loaded up with weights, so this should be just fine. A couple weeks before, actually, I forgot to mention this, but I had the fenders off. I uh, I pressure washed the frame and I got all the dirt and grease off, and uh, I fixed that leak from the hydrostatic pump. There was a uh, there was a plug on top of the pump that was uh, cross threaded. And uh, evidently someone had it out in the past and they cross-threaded it back in. And all the hydrostatic pressure was causing it to leak oil out of that plug because it was cross-threaded. So I took the plug out, um, I wrapped it in Teflon tape, and then I threaded it back in there tight. And it doesn't seem to be leaking anymore, so that's a good sign. Um, I'm just glad it wasn't anything major like a input seal or a uh, uh, one of the check valves on top of the pump. So I got that taken care of. And... Uh, I also had to fix some of the wiring for the tail lights. Uh, Andrew likes uh, to run these without the red um, reflectors or the red covers over the tail lights, so um, I don't have the red reflectors or the red covers. But uh, I fixed a, gr a loose ground and I got the tail lights working good. Uh, as you can see there. Um, so this tractor could be used for night plowing, but I'm going to use the 210. Like I said before, and then just last night, actually, Andrew was stopped by, and he was nice enough to send me the uh, the correct rear lift rod for the sleeve hitch because the uh, the lift rod that he gave me a few months ago was not the right one for this uh, for this tractor for uh, running the sleeve hitch. It was correct for a thirty three tiller, but it wasn't the right one um, to, hook, to hook up to the sleeve hitch. The old rod didn't have enough. Uh, depth it didn't provide enough depth for the sleeve hitch to lower all the way down So I couldn't get the plow all the way into the ground uh, when I had it out in the field testing it So Andrew was nice enough to uh, buy the correct lift rod and he dropped it off here last night and I got it mounted up um, I have it loosened. I have the yoke loose in here because I have to do a final Adjustment on it um, once I'll do that once we get to the event because uh, everywhere you go for these plow days the uh, the soil is a little bit different so um, you might require a slightly different adjustment. Um, so that's the 140. Uh, she's basically ready to go and uh, should make a good tractor. We'll be doing a lot of plowing. Um, now on to the 210. Uh, I figured while I had the 140 apart for a valve adjustment, I might as well do a valve adjustment on the 210 as well. Um, so I did. I ordered the gasket kit and the, uh, the filter element from iSave Tractors again. Uh, pretty good prices and pretty good quality parts as well. Um, I adjusted the valves on this one to uh, 9 thousandths on the intake and 18 thousandths on the exhaust. And uh, when I put it all back together, I, I took the governor cross shaft out and I didn't install it correctly. So when I got it running again, uh, it would over rev like, it, like the governor wasn't working. Um, I just figured out that I put the cross shaft in. Uh, it was rotated the wrong way. So I took that all apart. Um, put the cross shaft back in and I sealed up the the bushing that I don't know if you can see inside there there's a bushing back there um, that threads into the block and holds the cross shaft in place I sealed that up with a little bit of silicone to keep it from leaking oil because uh, the the uh, filter the, the breather filter on this engine was also clogged up and it was causing the excess blow by to leak out of the governor cross shaft on this engine too so I figured I would seal it up to prevent any future oil leaks um, while I was at it, I replaced the, the main governor spring here because the old one was bent and uh, it was binding up when I would move the throttle handle up and down. And I, uh, I also replaced the fuel line from the pump to the carburetor with some Tigon ethanol resistant fuel line. Because um, the old line was rotted pretty bad. And uh, I did a couple final adjustments to the carburetor and the, uh, 
the points and timing. Uh, I had a friend, a mechanic friend of ours, look at it just to double check it um, because if some of you remember from last year, uh, this engine couldn't. I couldn't get it to run quite right. It would knock when you put it under a load, and it would sputter like the carburetor was out of adjustment. So I figured I'd have someone else take a look at it, and he uh, he got it dialed in pretty good. It seems to be running a lot better now. At this point, all I have to do is just put the air cleaner cover back on and uh, put the sheet metal back on, and this tractor should be ready to go. So I think I'm going to do that after I shoot the video tonight. Uh, I also greased this tractor and got everything ready to go, made sure it was all good to go. Um, so it runs a lot better now than it did before, so I'm really happy about that. And I changed the oil in this one as well. Um, you can see I had it out in the back, or in the empty lot next door. Uh, last night I took it out for a couple rounds just to test it, and it does seem to be running much better. And it plows pretty good too. Um, but like I said in the last video, I'm only going to use this one at night. Um, because I have the new LED headlight kit on it. I'll have to do a separate video on that, I think. Um, but they're, uh, those LED headlights from Tractor LEDs are a great investment. So um, I, I bought them specifically for night plowing at PA Plow Day because they're so freaking bright. Um, so I'm going to use this tractor to uh, plow at night. And I figured it would be good to have a backup in case the 140 decides to act up for some reason. Uh, one other thing before I forget, I also put a new brake band on it. When I was plowing snow with this tractor this past winter, um, the old brake material had worn through. These uh, peerless transaxles have a, a band brake. And over time, you know, once the material wears down, it basically just falls apart. Um, the brake band itself was in good shape, but the material was just worn. So uh, what I did was I ordered a piece of uh, 3/16 inch non-metallic brake lining material from McMaster Car, and uh, I had the old brake line. What I or the brake band. What I did was I I sanded it all down, wire brushed it. I took a, a box cutter, a little a little knife or a box cutter, and I cut some notches in the brake band. Um, and then I epoxied the brake lining material to the inside of the brake band. And uh, the reason I cut those notches in it was uh, because uh, it gives the epoxy something to stick to so it doesn't slip and slide around on the metal. Um, so then I clamped everything together tight to make sure the epoxy would set. And uh, once the epoxy set, I put the brake material or I put the brake band back on the tractor and I took it out. And um, I mean, it's, it's like new. The thing stops on a dime. Uh, I even I had it rolling down my driveway in fourth gear wide open and the thing still stops on a dime so uh, I'm glad I changed the brakes because that could have been a problem down the road <laughs> you can't be driving around with no brakes on this thing anyway so that was just another quick project I did on the side there's one thing I didn't get the chance to do to this tractor I'm not going to have enough time to get it out of the way before plow day comes because uh, it's only three days away uh, I wanted to fix this custom rigged uh, drive pulley for the hydraulic pump on the 210 here um, I never made a video of the hydraulic lift kit uh, install last year, but I discussed it in my nighttime driving video that I made last year, uh, the week before PA Plow Day. Uh, but to make a long story short, um, this hydraulic lift kit came off of an earlier 200 series. I think it came off of a real early 214. And uh, at some point, I think it was around 1981 or so, they switched to a, uh, with the Kohler engines in these tractors, they switched to an externally threaded crankshaft that had, you know, threads coming out this side. Um, and then the flywheel was held on with a nut. They switched from that to uh, a crankshaft with internally tapped threads where the flywheel was held on with a bolt. Uh, and since this is a later tractor, this, is, uh, this engine's out of an 87216. Um, this is a later style crankshaft which has the internally tapped threads and the flywheel is held on with a bolt. Well, because the, the uh, hydraulic lift kit came off of an earlier 200 series with the old style crankshaft, the drive pulley for the hydraulic pump wouldn't work. Um, so we did a little custom rigging and uh, instead of uh, originally how this pulley was set up was it had threads tapped on the inside and you would thread the, um, the pulley onto the end of the crankshaft. My uncle and I got a little creative and we, we, we drilled a hole through the middle of it and we, we, uh, we basically destroyed the threads on the inside of it. We drilled a hole through it and we stuck a grade 8 bolt in there instead um, and made it work. It works pretty good. I mean I haven't really had any issues with it but the pulley does have a little bit of wobble. Um, I've been looking to tear it apart and try and fix the wobble if I can. Like I said, it's not really too big of a deal, but it, a, a wobbling pulley is, you know, something to be concerned about. And, uh, because the, fl this flywheel on this engine is held on with a bolt, um, if this bolt isn't torqued properly, you're going to shear the flywheel key and that can, you know, worst case scenario, that can destroy the flywheel or destroy the crankshaft. Um, but 
we torqued it a year ago, and uh, I haven't had a part since, and it's been running just fine, so I guess we did it right. But I do want to try and fix the wobble in that pulley. Um, that's one thing I didn't get the chance to do. I think that's another day's project. I just don't have time to do it at this point. And uh, sometime during the hydraulic lift install last year, I managed to destroy the uh, flywheel screen. Um, because of the pulley here, the, you have to use a special flywheel screen that has a, a circular cutout in the middle to fit the pulley. And at some point during the install, I, I destroyed the flywheel screen, so I had to get rid of it. And uh, um, I ran it for the past year without a flywheel screen, which is not something I recommend doing because it can let extra debris and trash get sucked up into your engine. Um, so I recently bought a uh, another flywheel screen for it off of a buddy of mine. Um, I just have to cut the hole in the center and then I'll install it, but I don't think I'll have time to do that before the plow day. Um, it's not like we're mowing with it right now, so I don't really have to worry about grass or anything getting sucked up into the engine. So for right now, I should be able to survive without having that flywheel screen. But in the future, I'm definitely gonna uh, I'm gonna install that other flywheel screen I bought. So that'll come next on the list after the plow day. Um, but anyway, uh, that's basically it. So that's a look at the two tractors now. Um, now they're pretty much ready for plow day. I think the only thing I still have to do is uh, check the tire pressure, but I'm going to do that the night before. Uh, I think I'm going to bring three or four of my suitcase weights. I'm not going to need them. I know my tractors won't need them, but I figure in case anyone else wants uh, a couple suitcase weights um, for their tractor to weigh theirs down a little bit more, uh, they're welcome to use them as long as I get them back. Um, I'm going to bring the suitcase weights, and I'm going to bring my extra set of 25-pound uh, Cup Cadet wheel weights. I think Andrew said he wanted them for his uh, his 140 or his 400, whichever one he's using to plow with. Um, so I'm gonna bring those along with me as well. Uh, and then I'm just gonna I'm gonna get my tool bucket and throw some extra tools and stuff in it. And I'm gonna bring probably 10 or 15 gallons of gas. I have three big gas cans, five gallon gas cans. So um, I'll probably just bring all of them. Uh, for those of you guys going, uh, make sure you fill your cans up with high test gas, 91 or 93 octane, with as little ethanol as possible. That's what's best for these small engines, and uh, it should help you get a little bit more power out of your engines, too. Uh, on the 210 here, I'm running a Bosch high-performance ignition coil with a high-performance spark plug wire from Kirk Engines. Uh, should provide a little bit hotter spark and give me a little bit more power. Um, if you're running a setup like that, which is what a lot of the pullers use, you want to run high test gas anyway. Uh, it'll burn a little bit cleaner and you'll get a little more power. So um, just a little PSA for you guys. Uh, one last thing I want to show you guys real quick. Uh, per your suggestions, I finally figured out what I'm going to do for the videos. Um, so I've decided to use my GoPro to show, uh, I'm going to mount my GoPro to the fenders of both tractors and um, I have a swivel mount that will attach to this, this little adhesive mount here. So what I can do is, what I'm planning to do is aim the GoPro forward like this uh, and then occasionally turn it back towards the rear of the tractor like this so you guys can see the, the soil being turned over. Um, I mean right there on the fender should be a good view. Um, I have a couple of these adhesive mounts, so I mounted one here on the 210, and I mounted one on the uh, same location on the 140. Um, so, I'll have the GoPro mounted on the side like that, so you guys will get to see those couple views. And I'll also use my head strap that I use for a lot of my other videos. Um, so you guys will see, uh, sort of like I did last year at, at the plow day, I'll have the GoPro mounted on my head at times. Um, but I'll be switching back and forth between GoPro angles. Um, I'm going to show most of the plowing with the GoPro. I don't think I'm going to shoot any of the plowing footage with my phone. Um, I'll just use my phone to shoot videos, of, you know, pulling up to the plow day and, uh, you know, taking pictures and videos of the uh, lineups of tractors and stuff and all the other events going on there. Um, but the plowing footage will be shot with the GoPro. So, uh, but anyway, uh, there you guys go. That's it for PA plow day prep. Uh, for this year and uh, the plow day is only three days away so uh, I'm really excited I mean I'm pumped I'm looking forward to seeing a lot of you guys there and we're going to have a great time so uh, stay tuned for the plow day videos I'll get them posted uh, as soon as I can after the event and uh, I'm looking forward to it so thank you guys for watching please comment rate and subscribe and stay tuned for PA plow day 2018